For more than five decades, Pastor John Osteen has taken the good news of Jesus Christ to the nations of the earth. Throughout the years, signs and wonders have followed this miracle ministry. And today, from the 8,000-seat Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas, see the miracle-working power of God in action and discover how you were made for miracles. And now, Pastor John Osteen. Welcome to the program today. We're so glad you've tuned in. We're going to help you with the Word of God because we're starting a series of messages on the authority of the believer. You'll never be the same. And we invite you to get your Bible and, uh, and study along with us today and in uh, several uh, uh, telecasts that are coming up. I have beside me a beautiful young lady. We've been married over 35 years. Everybody give her a good hand clap. Would you do that? Jody Osteen. Thank you. I'm glad, John, you're going to preach this message or this series of messages because some people really don't know. They are held captive by thought. Some people don't know that it's God's will for them to be healed. They don't know the authority that they have as a believer. And, uh, you know, the leper came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, if you will, you can make me clean. He knew that Jesus could do it, but he didn't know if it was Jesus' will. But you know what Jesus said? Two simple little words, I will. So some of you that are believing God to heal you, it is his will for you to be healed. Now you stay tuned and listen as he teaches on the authority of a believer concerning healing and other things, and it'll bless you and help you, and it may get you up off of a deathbed. Everybody said amen. Amen. Thank you, Dodie. I want you to lift up your Bible here and make the devil mad and Jesus glad. And you folks that have a Bible at home, just lift it up and say what we say. Everybody say it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My heart is receptive. I'll, never be the same. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated, and I want you to open your Bible to the book of Mark chapter 13. Mark 13, 34. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening, or at midnight, or cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Everybody shout, watch, three times. Watch, watch, watch. Now as I began, <clears throat> the Bible teaches that every believer has authority. But most of the church world does not realize that they have that authority. Now you take churches and ministers, for example. If they do not know their authority and position in the Lord, they will stay in a realm of unbelief and, uh, and weakness and not uh, uh, advance the kingdom of God. You take ordinary uh, housewives and businessmen. If they do not know their authority in the Lord Jesus Christ, they will stay on a low level and never accomplish their dreams. Great it is to dream the dream when you stand in youth by the starry stream, but a greater thing is to fight life through and say at the end, the dream is true. Could I have an amen? But you see, the fight life through phrase is what I'm talking about. If you don't know your authority, your position, your power, your privileges, and what you can do, it will never get done. You will stay poor. You will stay sick. You will stay defeated. You will stay weak. You will stay overcome. But you don't have to be that way. You can know your authority in Jesus and drive the devil away. I want you, before I even expand on this scripture, to meet a few of these people whose lives have been revolutionized. Their homes have been put back together. 
Their finances have, have, uh, have gone out of sight, up, up the ladder, and they become extremely prosperous. They have broken the power of the devil. No, they would not have done it unless they would know what the, the authority they had in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can whine and cry and cry and you can fast and pray until you drop uh, over from weakness and it will never change until you learn to act on your authority. Could I have an amen? amen? I want that microphone, wherever it is, the little hand up microphone there. And I want you people to become stand, come right up here. I want you to meet these people. Let me have the microphone, please. Everybody give them a good hand clap, would you? <laughs> now here's a man, Jesse and Martha Gallardo. You know, the first time I met Jesse, his life was in shambles. His finances were in shambles. Now, Jesse, he's one of my sons. I mean, he's just like my natural son, and he is a son as far as I'm concerned, and I'm his father. And that goes for Martha as a daughter, too. But I want you to know when Jesse, now, Jesse, you can nod your head if this is right. Jesse learned not only how to be saved here. He learned, he and Martha learned their authority in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they have a happy home. They have a successful business. He didn't want me to say this. But his tithe, the last two or three years, has been more than his salary was when he first came here. He is more than a conqueror. Can you say amen? amen. Give him a hand clap. Would you do that? Amen. Now, here's Tom and Shar Battle. The first time, I didn't know they lived close to us out in Kingwood, but we saw a great house going up over there. It, it, it's a multi-million dollar home. And Dodie and I rode around there and we looked at that and said, wonder what multimillionaire is, is building this. We thought maybe all the Arabs have come over here with all their oil money and was built. We didn't realize that behind that great fence over there in that multimillion dollar home, there was a man and a woman crying out for God. He was on drugs and he was on alcohol and he was about dead and he was very successful. But I'll tell you, he got saved, she got saved, and now they know their authority in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're doing something for God. Give them a hand clap, would you? Does it, does it make a difference to know your authority? Oh, yes, sir. It made all the difference in the world. Jesus set me free from all of those addictions, and I was in bondage, uh, trying to fill the void uh, in my heart, looking in the wrong place. And when I found Jesus, and the authority that's in his name, that's when I was set free. Amen, amen, amen. Give him a hand clap. Thank you. Well, here are Bob and Carolyn Bobola. Bob is an engineer at NASA, and his wife here puts up with him, just like Dodie puts up with me. Say amen. amen. But they, now, what's your background? Uh, Catholic. Catholic? Methodist. Methodist. They were Catholic and Baptist that just passed here. Everybody say, God bless the Catholics. God bless the, God bless the Methodists. God bless and what a blessing they are and how they are used all over the world. Does it make a difference to know your authority? Yes, sir. We were able to take back areas and territories the devil had taken from us, and it was exciting, and it changed Amen. us. Amen. Give them that a marriage. hand clap, would you? Amen. Thank you, Bob and Carolyn. Here, Peter and Liz Bazzini. I remember the first time I ever met uh, you was about 11 years ago, wasn't it? He wrote me a letter, and he was a young man. He wasn't married, didn't have this blessing then. Everybody say, God bless these blessings. God bless these Out loud, please. God bless now, Peter came in here, gave his heart to the Lord. He learned his authority. He got married. They have a beautiful daughter. And now he's a very successful businessman. Did it make a difference to know your authority? Quite simply, the difference that learning authority was the difference between failure and success. Amen. Give him a hand clap, would you? All right. Now here is uh, Barbara and Dale Weaver. Now he was an alcoholic. What's your background? Religion? Catholic. Catholic? Baptist. Baptist. Well, you know, you can be uh, uh, any kind of religion, be an alcoholic. And he couldn't get over. He couldn't get over all of that. But now they've got a happy home. They work in the prisons. They go out and win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't get by that way accidentally. It's not enough just to be saved. You can go to heaven saved, but let me tell you something. You need to know your authority in the Lord Jesus Christ. Does it make a difference? Yes, sir, it does. 
we started taking the authority in our lives that God said we had over our lives. And when we started moving, God started moving in our lives. And it's, it's great. Amen. Give them a hand clap. Glory be to God. Juan and Rosie Flores. He's a fireman. I don't know what she does, but she does, serves the Lord. Their little daughter was healed of leukemia. Uh, my, they are just such a blessing to this church. But they weren't always that way. They were beaten down, defeated, even though... What's your background? Catholic. Catholic? Catholic. Even though they were Catholics. Everybody say, God bless the Catholics. Amen. They know their authority. What happened? Do, do you, does it make a difference? Why? It makes a difference. See, the Word of God says that you shall have tribulations. You will have problems. When sickness comes along, you know that you have to take the Word of God about sickness and learn how to overcome and be victorious and know your authority in that area. Yes. When it comes to your finances, you have to look at the Word of God and find out what God has to say about finances. Yes. And when you find out, then you will take authority and know how to rebuke the power of the enemy through that authority and be prosperous. Amen. That's good. That's what I want to hear. Now, William Branham and Barbara Guthrie, they're the head of our uh, counseling uh, and prayer partners here in the church. Uh, he has a Poodle shop, and, and she has the only black spa in, uh, in, uh, in, the in the nation. The only black spa in the nation. He was chairman of the deacons in the Baptist church. Everybody say, God bless the Baptist again. Y'all were both Baptists? Yes. Both yes. Baptists. We were both now, Baptists. now you live so victoriously. Your businesses are booming. Yes. You're victorious in every area. Where'd you learn all that? We've learned that right here from you, Pastor, that ye, you told us that ye are of God, little children, and we read that, and you have overcome them. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in you. Amen, amen. We learned something else, too, that the devil cares nothing about being a deacon, if you're a chairman of deacon board or not. Unless you learn your authority, you will lead a defeated life. And we learn our authority in Jesus amen. Christ. Amen, give him a hand clap. Amen. Now. I want to be real good to this man. He's our banker. <laughs> Brother John Sidney and his wife, Phyllis, he is a, ch a vice chairman of the Med Center Bank. What's your background? My background is Assembly of God. Assembly of God? Church of Christ. Church of Christ. How'd you all get together? Church of Christ and Assembly of God. Oh, everybody say, God bless the Assemblies of God, God and the Church of Christ. Now, of course, Phyllis has worked here for years in the church, and what a mighty warrior she is. And Brother John Sitton is a, is a great servant of God. They didn't get that way accidentally. Does it make a difference? It makes a tremendous difference when you find out the Scripture says that we have authority and power over all the power of the enemy. Amen, amen. amen. Give them a hand clap. <laughs> Last but not least is Dr. Richard Walker and his wife, Marvia. What a blessing they are to the body of Christ and what a burden they have to reach the unreached and tell the untold. He's a medical doctor, has a practice over here in, uh, well, not Pasadena, on beyond that, Clear Lake. And, uh, and I'll tell you, they fought many a battle and they've won. Looked like they weren't gonna win for a while, but if you hadn't have known what we teach in this church, you never would have made it. I remember when we first met you, you had not yet passed your medical board and how you, you, you came for prayer and how, how you learned how you could take authority over these things. And you have gone from victory to victory to victory. Praise the Lord. How'd you get that pretty wife, an ugly thing like you? <laughs> the next time we go, we'll get a bill double the size. <laughs> no, it makes a difference to know the truth, doesn't it? Pastor Osteen, I realize that authority, the, the meaning of authority is the absolute right to command obedience. As I use that in medicine, especially in the operating room, Marvie and I, we applied the same principles to the, to the spirit realm, and we overcome the battles just as you've spoken. Now listen, uh, you have actually seen miracles in that operating room, haven't you? Yes, many. You saw a tumor disappear from Dodie's body. It was, on, it was on the scan. It was there. It was felt with your hand. And yet when you... It was there right at the time of surgery, just prior to surgery, a couple of minutes before we made in, incisions, a tumor was there. And by the authority that we have in the name of Jesus Christ, by the time we operated, the tumor was gone. That's right. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. You see... 
he bent down there and whispered and talked in Donnie's ear just as he began to operate, and he took authority over that thing. You said, well, does it always happen that way? Well, maybe not always, but thank God it does sometime. Yeah. Let's give them a good hand clap, would you? <laughs> now, notice this scripture. For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey. You see, we, we brought these uh, people up here to encourage you defeated people out there. Of course, I know you're saved. Of course, I know that you belong to Jesus. I know you love him. But did you know, folks, thousands and thousands of people who are born again and love Jesus live defeated lives? And thousands of preachers have defeated ministries? You know why? They do not know that they have to recognize their authority and act in their authority. And I'm telling you, folks, it's not going to happen until you learn what we're talking about. Notice, he took a far journey and he left his house. Say, I am the temple of God. I am the temple of God. See, Christians are the temple of God. He left his house. Jesus is in heaven. We are his house. What know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? Jesus left, but he sent the Holy Ghost. You know what the devil said? The devil said to people back there, he said, well, Jesus never made it back. I got him up there in the heavens and I captured him and he's my prisoner. You know, Jesus said, when I get back to the Father, you'll know I got back because I'm going to shed forth the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost comes, you'll know I made it back. And so... Many days went by, and the Holy Ghost had not come. And the devil said to many people, he didn't make it back. He didn't make it back. He didn't make it back. But on that 50th day called Pentecost, the, that Bible says they were all in one place with one accord, and suddenly, everybody shout suddenly. <laughs> suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. What was it? It was Jesus saying, I made it back to heaven, and he sent the Holy Ghost. And they all began to speak in other tongues when the Holy Ghost came. Now the Holy Ghost is the executive power of, of the Godhead. The Holy Ghost is in the earth today to enforce the new covenant, to enlighten us as to our rights and privileges. He is the one who will guide you into all truth. And if you're hungry for God, you'll stay with us or you'll come out here and let us teach you the word of God. The Holy Ghost did come. He said he took a far journey and left his house. And notice the next statement, and gave authority to his servants. What's that word? Authority. I can't hear you. Authority. Now listen, folks on television, he gave authority. You may not take it, but he gave authority. He gave authority. That's what this series is going to be about. You people right here, thousands of you this morning, you may whine and cry, and you know, you may, you may beg God. I'm telling you, folks, that's all. It's not going to get the job done. It's not going to get the job done. Even fasting is not going to get the job done. You say, well, I never heard anybody say that. Well, thank God you tuned in. Thank God you're listening here. No, God, you say, I'm waiting on God. God's waiting on you. I said, you're waiting on God. God's waiting on you. He's expecting you to do something. When Moses was down there and the, and the Pharaoh's army was right behind him and the Red Sea in front of him with a couple of million people there about to be swallowed up a Pharaoh's army or drowned in that sea, he was crying and crying and crying like a lot of people today. I'm telling you, crying's not going to bring you out of divorce. Crying's not going to bring you out, your child out of drugs. Try, crying is not going to bring your finances back. No, crying is not going to do that. You got to do something. You know what God said to Moses down there crying? He said, why criest thou unto me? Why criest thou unto me? Rise up, command the waters, speak, and take the people out across that water. So Moses dried his tears and stood up and he stretched out his rod and the waters to departed one, uh, on one side and then the other and they went across on dry ground. A miracle happened. So you need to stop your crying and hold out the rod of God. What is the rod of God? The name of Jesus Christ. I want you to look at a scripture over here in Luke chapter, Luke chapter 9. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them. Everybody say it's given. It's given. 
He gave them power and authority over him and the demons. All demons and the cure of diseases sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Notice he gave them power and authority. There's a difference in power and authority. Power is the dunamis, the flowing of, of divine energy through you. Authority is delegated power. You don't have to feel anything if you've got authority. If somebody has delegated authority to you. You know, I drive down the street sometime, and, and I see a little old skinny policeman, and he's got a badge on, and, and all that traffic coming down there, and a great big 18-wheeler right in front of all of them, and he doesn't think anything about it. He just steps out there and holds up his hand, and that 18-wheeler just screeches to a stop, and everybody behind him. Now, he doesn't have the power to stop it. I mean, he doesn't have the strength. He couldn't physically do it. His mind would, could say, well, you, you can't do this or you can't do that. He doesn't pay any attention to that. He knows he doesn't have to have power. He's got what? He's got what? See, that badge is his authority. Behind that badge is the, all the police station. All the police officers, all the police force. Behind that badge is the mayor's office. Behind that badge is the state of Texas. Behind that badge is the United States of America. It spells authority. And he just stands up there and exercises authority. He puts a stop to that truck. Or then he says, I give you authority to go on. See, you have authority. It's not in a badge. It's in the name of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. You may not want to stop trucks, but you can stop the power of Satan. You can stop curses and let blessings flow. But you see, the thing I want to emphasize is that, is that it's up to you to exercise that. God's not going to do it for you. And in these this series of messages that I'll preach tonight and Wednesday night and the next Sunday and all of that, I'm going to be giving you the keys and the secrets of how to function in authority. I'll tell you a dog story. Everybody here loves my dog story. Could I have an amen? amen? Now, we had a dog named Scooter. Everybody say Scooter. Scooter. He's a big German shepherd about that high. Man, he was strong. He had bound through the woods, you know, and he'd go with me on my walk and so forth, you know, and, and just, uh, just rippling with muscles, you know. Strong. He could just gobble up a, another dog to his own size, much less a little bitty one. So uh, I was walking down my street, and out came a little old dog about this long, that high. That was the tiniest little dog I think I've ever seen. And I thought, I saw him yapping, coming out uh, uh, the front door, you know, and running down out of the, the road where we were. And I, I thought, you, little dog, you go, I'd be, you'll just be one bite for Scooter. That's all it'll be. He'll chew you up and spit you out so fast. You better watch out because he's strong. But that little old dog came right out there. I was so proud of Scooter. Oh, I said, Scooter, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. I tell you, rule this neighborhood, Scooter. He chased cats and everything else, you know, and other dogs. And now this little old dog has the audacity to come out there. Well, I thought, well, too bad, little dog. Too bad your, your master shouldn't have let you out for, with my dog coming by. So that little dog just ran right up to Scooter, yapping. I don't know what he said in dog language, but you know what Scooter did? I was so ashamed of Scooter. He just, he just fell on his back, put up all four paws, and gave up. I wanted to kick him all day, all the way home. I said, you dumb dog, you could put one paw on that little dog. I don't know what that little dog said, but it scared my dog to death. <laughs> you know that may be bad, but you know what's worse? is for the children of the living God who have the power of God and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some little old black striped white hairy yellow demon come out sh shouting at you and you just turn on your back and turn all four paws up and give up. What a tragedy. It's time for the church of the living God to arise. It's time for the Catholics to be strong and the Baptists to be strong and the Church of Christ to be strong and the Methodists to be strong and all the churches to be strong. God has given authority to his servants in every denomination. But I'm telling you, folks, you've got to learn it. You can change your whole life. What you cried about, fasted about, prayed about, talk to God about and nothing has happened, you can change your whole life by knowing the authority of the believer 
rise up in the name of Jesus and command the evil forces against you to leave. And you'll learn how more and more as you tune in. Don't miss a one of these telecasts because it will change your life. Thank you.